So basically, I want to I wanna tell you a little bit about uh, why I chose this topic. This is just an initial idea I had at the time um, about a concept I was working on. Uh, this basically led me to a new conceptualization that I'm working on right now in uh, another project uh, that we'll be presenting as a portfolio for our professors. But this, uh, I was really interested in phonetics, maybe as a second, I don't know, language uh, frustration I had about accent, accent, how do we improve pronunciation? What do we do? What are the things that we can do as second language speakers? Um, um, because me, myself, for the ones who don't know me, I speak Spanish as my uh, L1. So um, Dr. Craze gave me the idea to look into this concept called uh, ultimate attainment, um, which I'm gonna define in a minute. The way I'm titling uh, my project, my annotated bib at the time was influential factors when analyzing ultimate attainment variables in native-like pronunciation. So when, uh, before starting, I had three questions. Um, how much can the learner improve his or pronunciation? What factors um, influence the analysis of this end product? So when we are doing research, what are the variables that we consider when doing this research? Uh, because that seems to be pretty influential in the result that you're gonna get. Um, and finally, can the learner process a pronunciation similar to that of a native speaker of the target language, which was in a way maybe my personal frustration. Um, so I looked into ultimate attainment. This is one of the definitions um, I found. The outcome of second language acquisition, irrespective of whether this outcome is similar or different from native language. So then I said, okay, I'm gonna look into um, ultimate attainment focused on pronunciation. The interesting thing I found is that the concept in general as well is fundamental to prove or disprove the validity of the critical period hypothesis proposed by Lenneberg in 57, which is basically what this uh, CPH says is, the later you start acquiring learning language, the less chances that you have to master it, in this case, specific acquire, acquire native-like pronunciation. Um, I started looking into a lot of bibliography for uh, my twin sources at the time, and uh, some of the variables that, um, that uh, researchers consider were the following. So we have some of the authors to the right on top, Abrahamson, Haltonstam, uh, Brandon and Long, who considered age of acquisition as one of the most important, if not the most important variable in acquiring a language. Um, this, uh, as I outlined, he, I outlined here, goes along with CPH, with uh, the critical period hypothesis. Um, but there were some other scholars that were, did not completely agree. For example, Bertson, who considered uh, this age of acquisition not to be the most important variable, uh, definitely, definitely a relevant one, but not, not the most important. He also considered um, length of residence in the, the foreign country of the target language, age at the moment of study, and aptitude, motivation, and explicit instruction. The interesting thing about the, um, if we redefine the CPH into a sensitive period and not a critical period, is that it, it doesn't bear such, an, uh, such a relevance in the acquisition. There were even other scholars, for example, Bongertz, Munoz and Singleton, um, 2007, who consider uh, the edge of acquisition as only another variable, not even significantly more relevant than these other variables. Length of residence, which means uh, how long the person has lived in the target language uh, community. The age of, uh, and here I define the age at the moment of study, which basically is the age at which the person started learning English. Um, and, and this is important and different from age of acquisition because we are bringing in another variable here, explicit instruction, um, along with aptitude and motivation, who are also very important variables. Motivation and, ex and explicit instruction, uh, which had been underrated 
um, if I may say, uh, were discovered to play a very important role. Uh, mo motivation, there's a study, this variable seems to play such an important role that in another study, it was shown that a learner who developed pl a plan to improve her pronunciation in Alborg uh, and who had only six months of immersion in the target language country scored only 10% short of being within the native-like range. So this is the, the, um, the kind of influence that motivation can have as another variable besides age of acquisition. Then explicit instruction became some, such, a, such an important variable as well. Uh, explicit instruction phonetics has proved to aid learners in tremendous improvement in pronunciation. Um, such as in studies as, as, as um, Thompson. Um, then uh, some of the things that were discovered uh, were the, or th that were pointed out with the inconsistency in results that were in all the research. And I noticed that and I said, okay, so we're getting in some results, we're getting people who get uh, scores with them being native like sometimes, some definitely not. Um, so I started studying which variable specifically. One of the problems I noticed and was pointed out by Abrahamson and Heltonstam was the ambiguity of the term native likeness. And that is why they delineate a difference between being perceived as a, na as a native like speaker by native speakers or, uh, um, or exhibiting actual native like behavior. And that is why uh, along, uh, along with Abrahamson uh, performed a lot of tests that did not include raters which is a concept I'm gonna go in in a minute. They perform tests um, with uh, VOT technology, which means, stands for voice onset time. Basically it measures um, the, um, the length of uh, stop consonants when you're pronouncing something. Uh, it lengths, um, it uh, takes a measure of how long that stop consonant, um, how long